You're back with the Notebook Tech Tech Review Channel on YouTube, and today we've got the Google Pixel C, not the Pixel Chi. I keep calling it the Pixel Chi. Those of you who know screen technology from a few years ago will remember the Pixel Chi, a daylight readable screen. This is the Pixel C. The Google Pixel C is actually an Android tablet, a marshmallow Android tablet. Let's take this bit away for a second because what we're dealing with here to start with is a simple 10 inch tablet with very few connections on. It looks very nice and it costs 499 euros, uh, 499 dollars for a 32 gig version without any 3G LTE, without any GPS, without any NFC and what was the other thing? Uh, yeah, Miracast is missing from it as Mir uh, Miracast support. So uh, on first glance, it seems quite expensive, but technically this is quite a good tablet. Uh, the Notebook Check review gave it a score of 88%. And what I'm gonna do now is just go through some of the highlights. We'll talk about the screen that's important, the battery life, of course, performance, and um, yeah, any, any issues like heat or uh, throttling, and maybe a little bit of word on the camera too. So this video is gonna be about 10 minutes long. If you wanna to scroll to the end, scroll to the end. If you wanna fast forward to the end, I'll give you there a summary of the highs and lows, the issues and the high points, and also the summary score breakdown. So let's start um, with, again, that uh, price. 499 euros for a 32 gig wind, uh, Android tablet is quite expensive. You wouldn't expect a tablet to be that expensive, but this is targeted at premium market. It's interesting, when you turn it on, you look at uh, basic marshmallow, it seems quite plain and simple. It doesn't look any different to anything else. Uh, in fact, there are very few enhancements on this because this is a pure marshmallow experience. Um, you add the keyboard and it looks very much like some of the old smart books of even going back to 2010. Um, but let's just take a look at the specs here. On the screen now, we've got uh, the specs for you. Let's highlight that uh, NVIDIA Maxwell uh, GPU, sorry, Tegra X1 with the Maxwell GPU, which is a pretty powerful processor. Now, those of you that are interested in Android games might be paying attention now uh, because clearly this is going to be something that's going to be good for games. I'll give you some uh, graphic scores uh, later in this video. We have the 64 gig version here, but again, no uh, LTE inside, no 3G, and no GPS as well. Um, bit, uh, the screen, 10.1 inches, and we've got a 256 by 1800 pixel resolution, 308 DPI. So it's a pretty high resolution screen and quite a high brightness screen as well. It looks quite nice. It looks like there's a deep black level as I look at the, the screen here. Now let's just uh, turn it on and you can see that the black levels there, well, you may not be able to see it on the, the video, but the black levels there uh, seem to be pretty good. But we've done measurements with the Calman uh, tester and uh, I'll bring you those in a minute. Let's just take a quick look around uh, the device here, bringing in on the, on the cam making that sure that we are nicely focused in. As you can see, only one USB-C port. That's about it, one USB-C port. Of course, through that, you'll be able to power the device. You'll be able to power other devices. You'll be able to attach on-the-go devices. So micro, S uh, sorry, uh, USB sticks, for example, and I've already tested keyboard and mouse, and that works pretty well. Um, you should also be able to connect screens as well. So USB-C will support, uh, adapters for HDMI, VGA, and uh, other uh, display port and other types of uh, display adapters. So that's an interesting port, but there is only one of them. So once you've got it plugged into something, connected to something, you're gonna need a hub. So you have to think about that, and you have to think about the cost of the USB-C accessories at the moment as well, which are fairly high. And uh, even the standard cable, the adapter cable to a standard USB uh, three port is a good 20 euros, I think, 17.99, something like that. So quite high price at the moment. These prices need to come down. And the other thing is, if you're transporting this around and you didn't bring the power adapter with you and you haven't got a USB-C adapter, which happened to me yesterday, you're stuck. So why didn't uh, Google provide an adapter for USB-C to USB standard charging or micro USB rather than this fixed power unit? We've actually got just you know, normally you'd be able to take that one out of there, take that cable out of there, and you'd be able to use the cable as, a, as an adapter cable. That's not 
the case here. So that's a, a bit of a shame. But that's the, the power cable there. So you've got speaker on this side, speaker on the other side as well. We've got uh, the power and we've got a volume rocker as well. Oh, one more, the headset port as well on that side. So a pretty basic set of ports, but it does mean it's kept nice and tidy, nice and clean, and nice and light. Uh, the total weight is 517 grams, so fairly light for a 10 inch tablet, and it feels pretty good. It's got 34 watt hour battery, I'm just checking that, 34.2 watt hour battery inside. So for that weight and that size, that's a pretty good battery size. So let's see what, to, what we get in terms of battery life out of it. Let's have a look at a quick size comparison from the interactive uh, size comparison on our website. I'm going to turn off the uh, others. So we've got the Google Pix uh, Pixel C there. I'm going to put the Z4 tablet as an overlay, and you'll see it's slightly longer and slightly thinner. So it's a very closely matched in, uh, tablet in terms of size, and I think in terms of target users as well, it's pretty closely matched as well. There's the uh, Apple iPad Air 2, similar length, slightly thicker. And then we'll go to the Google Nexus 9, which is um, a lot smaller uh, and a lot thinner as well. So we've got two cameras on this. We've got a two megapixel uh, front-facing camera and an eight megapixel rear-facing camera. And the rear-facing camera is actually pretty good for a tablet, but uh, um, in terms of comparisons between some of the high-end smartphones, it's not quite holding its own. Front and rear cameras can do 1080p video, and I'm doing a little video here from the, uh, the rear camera, and everything seems to be t quite smooth in terms of operation. But I can see in this low light scenario here, a lot of uh, noise on that video. Um, taking pictures, let's do a very quick uh, camera test, or just a speed test to see how quick it is to focus. Quite slow, initial focus there. Let's touch the focus somewhere else. Little bit of hunting, and um, as you can see, hopefully there. Little bit of hunting. If it's not in focus, it's taking a little while to hunt, set the focus, and shoot. Uh, but in terms of tablet cameras, that should be up there with some of the best. We've got some information on the website. I'm looking at the uh, German version of the review at the moment. That's being translated. We've got some test pictures for you and some, um, and some more detail on the cameras. Usage is fairly straightforward. Anyone that knows Marshmallow will find their way around this very easily. The only thing to mention is that it seems to be very spaced out in terms of icon and space usage. There are some apps that don't go into landscape mode and some apps that won't work on this. For example, WhatsApp won't uh, authenticate because it needs an SMS and there's no uh, 3G or LTE uh, modem in this to receive any SMSs, so no vo voice calls as well. Skype, of course, will work, but certain apps you'll have a problem with. We tried uh, Periscope. I'm just going to give you a little uh, demo of Periscope here, uh, but unfortunately that's an app that always stays in landscape mode, and that didn't work well at all. You can see that in the picture now. That's a problem when it comes to the keyboard. This 170 euro keyboard is quite nice. It's a Bluetooth keyboard and it's got a, a very, very strong magnetic hinge there. If I can just pull that off the back, you'll see just goes onto there and then you can lift it up, put it forward, put that down and you can put the whole unit together and it stays together magnetically. Now there's a couple of uh, issues. If you put it around the wrong way, it won't be very strong magnetically. That's that's the way. It feels like it might be magnetic, collect, magnetically connected, but it's a little bit slippery. Um, the other way you can use it is to pop it on the back. And again, you need to find the right way around to put that before it becomes stable. Even then, there's still a little bit of uh, possibility that you could play with it and uh, scratch the back and uh, mess around with it and have it fall off. Uh, in general, though, it's pretty stable. It's nice to have that uh, different screen angle capability there. And uh, apart from it being a little bit expensive, it seems to be a nice uh, keyboard. Let's, um, let's go to Word and uh, get that up here. The keyboard experience is, qu is quite good. And... Uh, 
because the because the screen's so near, it's quite easy to touch the screen and to do certain things. The apps, certainly this uh, Word app seems to be nicely laid out for touch uses. This is, oops, let's try that. This is a test of the um, Google Pixel C. So a reasonable experience on the keyboard, the mechanics and the spacing is quite nice because you've got no function keys. There's uh, quite a bit of space, but it's still slightly smaller than your average keyboard, still sort of netbook style feeling in terms of uh, looking at it in, uh, in terms of productivity. Let's have a, a look at that screen and a look at our test results as well. Nice IPS screen, obviously very high resolution. There's a good brightness there as well. 487 in the middle, but a maximum of 533 nits, which is reasonable for outdoor use. But of course, remember this is a glossy screen, so in direct sunlight, you're gonna have problems with that. The black levels are good, and uh, we're getting a contrast ratio, maximum contrast ratio of 1,249. So that's a nice contrast ratio, and that really helps the uh, outdoor usage as well. In terms of color accuracy, out of the box, five over five for the color delta, and we've got over seven for the grayscale, nearly eight there, which is a little bit higher than we'd like to see. We'd like to see levels below five for a, an accurate screen color representation. Have a look at uh, some of the devices on this comparison table there. And if you look at the Apple iPad Air 2, where the figures at 2.86 and 2.37 are much better than this Pixel C. We've got a number of charts and more pictures to show you on the website on the full review. Uh, we've also got some information on pulse width modulation and rise and fall times. That's the uh, speed response time of the screen. With the NVIDIA Tegra X1, we should be getting pretty good performance out of this. I'm gonna give you some figures right now. It's an eight core, four large, four small core um, device. And here we've got some uh, test marks for you. 3D mark I'm gonna start with. The Pixel C coming in with 40,665 points there for 3D mark. And if you have a look at the comparison devices there, it beats even the iPad Pro. Uh, by a good margin. In fact, that's a 17% improvement, or rather the, seven, the iPad Pro is 17% slower than this. So you've got a lot of graphics performance here. When we go to something that might be a little bit less uh, GPU focused, the Antutu benchmark, we can see slightly different results. We've got the Pixel C here at 90,568 and the uh, iPad Pro at 1884,346, which is uh, pretty much double the uh, power in terms of Antutu benchmarks. For an all-round score, PC Mark gives you a good, uh, a good uh, idea of how this is gonna perform, and that takes into account GPU, CPU, and things like memory speed and storage speed as well. 60,000, sorry, 6,858 points is a really, really good score, and that beats all the other devices in that uh, test there, including the Nexus 9 and the Z4 tablet. When we get to uh, things like SunSpider and uh, web-based uh, tests, JavaScript tests, which are largely single-threaded, we have an issue. The Pixel C is not the fastest of the bunch here. 833 milliseconds, our test result for Sun Spider, whereas the iPad Pro blazes through it at 181 milliseconds. Go to Octane V2, 7,563 points, and the iPad Pro, 19,000 points there. Air 2 also beating the Pixel C with over 10,000 points. We've got some information on the gaming side of things on the uh, full review, uh, but as is probably pretty obvious by now, there's enough performance here to play any game in the Android store and make everything nice and fluid uh, and, and give you a really good experience. In general use though, overall very, very quick, no hiccups, no problems. Uh, we've got AC Wi-Fi in here, so everything is loading nice and quickly. Everything is rendering nice and quickly, zooming nice and quickly and uh, really don't have any problems at all with the speed of this. It's very fast and uh, quite a pleasure to use, to be honest. The other good thing about it is that under load, we didn't get too much heat out of it. We got a maximum of 42.3, which is nothing too much to, to worry about. So it's not getting too hot. It's a, li a little bit detectable uh, on, the, uh, on the side here, uh, but it's not hot at all. And uh, I haven't been really putting it under a lot of load here, but uh, you'd notice a little bit of heat if it was... Uh, being used for browsing and scrolling, that would generate a little bit of heat, but nothing here to worry about. 
If you're interested in the speakers, there are some test results there. We've run uh, uh, white noise tests on the speaker, and basically we've got uh, a reasonable response, reasonable speaker there, nice loudness, and um, a good uh, response range over that, uh, well, let's say to 250 to uh, 10, 12 kilohertz, there is going to be enough to keep you satisfied in terms of gaming and watching videos. Right, let's get on to battery life here. Um, I've been using it for a few hours and I've been putting it through its uh, paces. It looks like I would get maybe 20 hours out of this full use. So that's 20 hours of usage um, from this. So uh, that's not too bad considering the amount of usage I've got here. I've got this screen uh, knocked up pretty brightly as well. I'm gonna turn that down a little bit to be honest. Um, but if you have a look at our test results, um, idle figure, which is a little bit uh, synthetic, 34 hours, 50 minutes. It's, it's good, but it's not an indication of how it would work under any sort of load. Uh, Wi-Fi, though, 10, 10 hours, 38 minutes Wi-Fi. And that's good fast Wi-Fi as well with the AC Wi-Fi module in there and the good processing power. You're getting a lot out of that 10 hours. You're getting a good productive 10 and a half hours there out of that. So that's a really nice figure in terms of Wi-Fi. HD video playback, the Big Bug Bunny uh, HD video, we managed to get that to play for 12 hours, 20 minutes in our test, and that's another nice figure as well. You've got 500 uh, grams of 10-inch screen, good high-res, reasonable color, good contrast, um, uh, good brightness uh, screen. So that's a really nice uh, figure. We're thinking about going onto a flight or in the car. Uh, for the kids, that's going to be a great, uh, no problems battery life. So before we get on to the, the roundup, the uh, pros and cons and the breakdown of the scores, just want to throw in my opinion on this. I think that uh, 499 is a little bit expensive, but even more expensive is this uh, keyboard, which is coming in at uh, a much too high. 170, let me just double check, 170 euros for that USB keyboard. It's nicely engineered. It looks good. It's quite light, and it's obviously got the magnet, magnets in it that help you lift and stand the stand. But there are many, many other cheaper options uh, for the Pixel C out there, uh, and you can buy yourself a cheap uh, soft case for it for no money at all. So you'd have to think about that keyboard option. It really does make it more usable, and it works very nicely as a stand, and it works very nicely as a keyboard, but um, this 170 is extremely expensive for what it is. And this unit is expensive as well, 499 euros for a device without 3G LTE, without GPS, without Miracast. There is, I think I might have said that it hasn't got NFC. It has got NFC inside, but that fact that it hasn't got LTE, and this is supposed to be a mobile device, how are you gonna go um, on the road with this without having 3G or LTE capability? So there's a big question mark over that, and it also man means that things like WhatsApp don't, doesn't work, and uh, also, some of those apps that don't work in landscape mode could be a problem as well. So some issues there, and I think in terms of style, there's nothing really that special about this. It is a clean and light device, very slick looking, but uh, nothing incredibly special about it. So it doesn't really have that uh, style factor that's going to uh, mean that you pay that extra money just for the style aspect. So very quickly, we go through the pros and cons now. If you've just jumped forward to this section of the video, don't forget to give us a, a thumbs up. Don't forget to like the video. Don't forget to subscribe if you want those videos in your email box as we upload new ones. Right, let's get on to that uh, pros and cons list. This is in German here. I'll translate this for you. So Tolles design, good design. And that's clear. It is a good design. I don't think it's any sort of fashion icon, but it's a very clean, clean design with high quality materials there. And uh, really overall, it seems to be very, very well built. Of course, we've got Marshmallow on here, and we've just had an update on Marshmallow on this as well. Uh, so you're getting the very latest Android, and you're getting it supported by Google as well. So that's an advantage. The SoC in here, certainly for graphics, one of the most powerful you can get. So for gaming, really, really good. Uh, and for some advanced applications as well, really, really good. Eight core CPU, ah, well, okay, that has disadvantages when you're doing single threading, and we saw that with that SunSpider test result, but in general with browsing, it seems to be very, very fluid and very, very powerful indeed. An advantage, well, the USB Type-C, if you've got the adapters, if you've got the modules that allow you to, to adapt to external screen, for example, could be a disadvantage if you forget your charger. So those last three points there, 
Um, high uh, viewing angle stability. So it really is a very nice IPS screen. There are a lot of angles you can use this at. So a couple of people around a table watching a presentation would be quite, uh, quite acceptable with this. Good camera with daylight. We just tested that in the studio here, which have relatively low lighting. And that was a little bit noisy, but it looks like the camera is good in daylight. Maybe a little bit slow to focus, but that could be, uh, could be a function of the, uh, the low light in here. Finally, you've got really good battery life, uh, although there's a 35 watt hour battery in there, which is uh, three times the size of most smartphone batteries. In fact, probably four, five times the size of most average smartphone batteries. So you'd expect that. But this is a 10.1 screen with a high pixel density. So there's a lot of uh, backlight LEDs here to take into account. I've mentioned the contras, the minus points already. There's five points there. No micro SD slot, no GPS, no mobile data module, uh, camera noise at low level, and the, the keyboard costs 170 euros. I think actually 499 for the 32 gig version is a little bit on the high side as well, uh, considering you're only getting a simple Android tablet at the end of the day. Good quality, but it is an Android tablet, and you'll need to have... Um, a good reason to buy this if you want to, if you're going to give 499 euros out for it. Right, despite those five little negative points there, there's the score breakdown. 89% is what we gave it in total, and you can see the, the well, I'll, let me just go through some of the Gehäuse is the casing, uh, pointing devices, obviously, Gewicht, weight, display is obvious, uh, power under. Um, uh, pro, uh, programs is 89%. The speakers we gave 100%. Camera 88%. Keyboard 100%. Probably not taking into consideration the price of that unit. Connectivity down at 57%. So that's that USB-C problem. Uh, and the fact that it probably doesn't have, well, it doesn't have 3G and LTE as well. Battery life, that's that life site, 94%. Uh, gaming power, 79%. Mm, could argue they might even be worth more if your games are only using, uh, sorry, if you're doing um, high-end gaming, that uh, this will actually keep up with anything. Temperature good as well. Audio quality, 82% on an average. Uh, average there was 79.1%. But if we weight that as a tablet, we come out with an 89% overall score. So that's a good score. In fact, it's a very good score under our testing system. So no doubt the Pixel C, not the Pixel C, is an extremely interesting little 10-inch tablet. One more opinion from me, it is in the netbook class of device. And when you think netbooks, you do think low cost. This isn't a productivity device, although I have used Word Office, sorry, Office Word and Office PowerPoint uh, to work on documents and presentations, and that does work. This really is, though, a buddy device like every other 10-inch device was uh, up until this day and probably into the future as well. Uh, so consider that when you're thinking about uh, giving 499 euros out for the tablet and 170 euros out for that keyboard. There's that problem again with the rotation. Even Google Music won't work in landscape mode, at least through the entry screen as well. I'm just going to push that away and try going into landscape mode. Okay. The main application does actually go into landscape mode. So I'm going to go off and play some music now. Thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up if you've got something out of the video. Don't forget to uh, subscribe if you want notifications of new videos as they go up. Coming up, we have the Lumia 950 XL. I did a video on that yesterday with Miracast on the screen behind me. We've got the HP Spectra X2 over in the corner as well, and, uh, and a couple of other devices lined up as well. So stay tuned, and uh, we'll bring you some new notebook check tech reviews uh, on this channel. Thanks for watching.